What up nerds, it's your boy with another video and today I'm gonna show you a better way to send packets. In previous tutorial we found a speech function and we were calling it by address. So if we wanted to for example move our character or use some kind of object, we would need to find function for every action in the game. And that would be around 70 function addresses for our bot to use. But with this method that I'm gonna show you we will need from 3 to 7 functions and we will be able to send any packet in the game. So first thing let's attach our debugger, I'm using x32 this time, press f9 to unfreeze the game, alt e to go to the modules and press ctrl a to analyze the process. So just like in previous tutorial we will trace our function through calls to winsock library, we will find follow function and then attack function and compare them to see if they have uh, similarities with each other and other functions in the game. So let's go search, intermodule calls. Okay, so the scan is finished. Let's type send, go to the bottom one and start of the function. Now, if you press this little button, it will open battle list. So this is the NPCs and, and if you right click on it you have an option to follow so we'll put breakpoint and click to follow let's go to the return F9 to unfreeze the game go to the start of the function if you press escape it will just stop following anything now oops let's do the same thing let's follow Go to return again. Stop following. I can already see that we are in the follow function because if we put breakpoint and move, it doesn't get triggered. It only gets triggered when we actually follow. So let's see what the parameters this function takes and try to see what does it do with the parameters. Let's go outside to see the parameters. Again, it's probably fast call, but we are just checking the, the parameters. We follow. This huge number is stored in ECX. Then next. Okay, so it just looks like one argument only. Okay, F9. Okay, so this time I'll follow and then I will follow the program flow to see what does it do with ECX and the parameter inside. Okay, let's step into the function and see where the ECX is. You see that ECX is moved into ESI, then ESI is moved into this, this address. We're testing ESI with ESI and if it's equal, we are jumping to this, we move a2 to ECX, we call this function, and here it is. ESI will be moved into ECX, and this function will be called. Okay, so interesting F9. I will put this into a graph. So no, let's take this, let's do this first. We can do this label, and we can change this. Uh, call to winsock because we came from this function into this function it will be easy, easier for us to, to look at this and I will put this into a graph because now we are going to find a attack function we will find it again through this call to winsock so just press enter to it and Start of the function, you can again right click and there's a tack over here, so we'll do the same thing. F2 and attack. Okay, let's go to the return. Okay, we are in attack function. Now let's try to see some similarities. We came from here into this function, so this is the follow function and this is attack function. Okay, again increment something and then it moves 
here it moves a1 and here it moves a2 but they are calling the the same the same function and i'm guessing since we saw that in uh, in follow function this esi is being a that huge number that's creature id that we want to follow so i'm probably it's probably the same with attack function it's probably creature id yeah again the same number as we saw in follow function so and then they call this function okay now they they look pretty 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 similar so what what would happen if we change this a to a1 to a2 we press press attack look at this we press attack but it's actually following so it probably looks like this is the the packet id because if we move it back to a a1 then we are actually you know it says we can't attack it in protection zone so we are sending an attack packet but if it's a2 then we are sending a follow packet okay so this has to be some kind of packet id because in if you go back to to my previous tutorial you'll see the same function is being called but with the argument uh, 96 in hexadecimal so this function has to be for packet id and this next thing we know that that's a creature id then this next thing i have no idea let's, let's see it's b means 11 I don't know. <laughs> F9. And we see that this is 8 bit register. It's like lower ECX. And there's one. Let's try to put it to zero. If we attack now, we see that nothing happens. We didn't get the message that we couldn't attack him. And if we restore it back, and attack now you see that you you may not attack this person while you're in protection zone so this has to be some kind of flag before uh, the packet is being sent if it's zero then the packet is not ready if it's one it means that this function then can take the packet and send it because what this these functions are doing they are they are structuring the packet into a packet buffer and this function is just taking the packet out of the buffer and encrypting it and sending it to the server so we will call these functions to, to make the packet for us in the buffer and then call this call to winsock and uh, the function will encrypt the packet the encryption method and that we don't even need to know and it will send the packet for us so You'll see later that we can use these functions for sending pretty much any any packet. We don't need to always find uh, every function for every action in the game. I'm gonna open our project from previous tutorial. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is take the RVA of these four functions and see what the parameters are and we will just call them one by one the same way as they are in this debugger. Let's declare more of these. You see we have, I don't want to mess any functions from a previous tutorial. So let's call this first one packet ID function. The second one was uh, creature ID. I'll call it packet item function because that's one item in the packet. The next, if I remember, was number 11. But we'll just call it, I don't know, packet, packet 3 function. And then this is packet end function. Because that's the function that calls the windsock. Okay, so let's clear them here as well. Let's look at the debugger first function we'll just copy here copy 
RVA and it takes A1 in hexadecimal. So it's a it takes a number. So we'll just leave this integer. Let's declare all of these here as well. Okay, so once we declare them, let's let's take the RVA of this first function again. Copy RVA here and press minus to go back. Go to the second one. Let's copy this function's RVA. Zero x number. Press minus to go back. To the third one. RVA and the last one. So we know that first function's parameter is a1. It's moved into ECX. Then th there's a function call. So again, that's past call probably, and it's a1. So we declared number, just an int. Next thing is that's a creature creature ID. If I'm not wrong. Put into ECX. Yeah, that's a creature ID, a huge as number. Okay, so that's again an integer, and we'll call it creature ID. Third function is this. It was eleven, if I'm not wrong, first time. This time, sixteen. I think that's just a random number. Because we can see that it just after this test, it just goes to this. It increments it by one. So every time it just increments that uh, that address value by one. So I think we can just put any any number. We'll declare that as integer again. Just put any number, pretty much. And then the last function is one. Okay, let's put it like this. Even though let's declare it as byte. One. Okay. Now uh, make another instance of this. So if we actually press numpad three, we will call all of these functions in a row. So first thing we need to call is packet ID with 0x1 yeah 0x a1 now after that we call packet item with creature ID which is we'll just copy this creature ID that's an NPC attack Okay, copy, breakpoint off, it's in decimal, next thing is packet three function, I know I gave stupid name to these functions but it's just for proof of concept, I'll just put 10 here even though it just this uh, number just increments every time this function is called so I don't think they they check this so and at the end we'll call packet end with parameter one okay uh, I think that's it let's build it okay built let's go back to the game I'm gonna use ch injector and inject so as we put it into our code, when we press 3, we will attack this NPC. And we are in protection zone, you see by this flag, if I put mouse on it, it will say we are in protection zone and we can't attack players in here. So if we press 3, you say, it says you cannot attack this player in protection zone. If we press end, it will unload our DLL. And I'll show you a another cool thing if we make another instance of this and we have it we have 
uh, follow function in uh, in the graph here. It says A2 the packet, but everything else is pretty much the same. So we can just put you press four, we'll send a packet of A2, and that's a follow packet. And again, we are going to inject, and if we press four, we should follow the NPC. Yeah. We are following the NPC now, and it's instant. We can't uh, stop it actually, <laughs> even though you don't see this green thing. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you find this tutorial helpful. You can pretty much find any packet inside of the game with this. If you just go to this call to windsock, and I'll show you actually. You can, I don't know, for example, we'll try to recreate, if you want to recreate a save function like we did in previous tutorial, you just type something and go to debugger and if you put a breakpoint and save something, go to the save function, all you need to do, this you see again, packet. this is packet uh, ID 96. Again, you just need to call these functions in a row and then call this last end function and you'll you'll say something in uh, in private chat. So this this gives us a lot of power because we don't need to declare like save function, move function and all of those. We can just call these three functions and send any packet in the game. So yeah, that's it and see you soon. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos, and peace out.